my favorite this year. Reminds me of something that my the, mom uh, makes. As a white guy, we all love Panda Express. I do love Asian food from Chinatown, the authentic, but I'm very interested to see what we got going on here. What's going on guys? 2021 has been a crazy year for Asians. Some good things, a lot of bad things, but today we are trying to more focus on one of the positive aspects. As you know on our channel, we love to cover how culture is constantly changing. So in this video, we're gonna be delving deep into brand new Asian restaurant concepts that are getting so popular in New York City and across the country. A lot of it is being led by second generation Asians, first generation Asians, international people, and even some non-Asians who are just embracing the culture. So starting off this journey, we got native New Yorker Marco with us. What's going on everybody? So I grew up in the Lower East Side in Chinatown. I grew up on Asian food my whole entire life. Still eat it to this day, but I'm more familiar with the older Asian food. But today, we're gonna check out the new, the new stuff. So our very first brand new Asian concept is Milu here in the Flatiron District. It is a Cantonese-based, very fast and casual dining experience. Guys, one of the dishes reminds me of exactly what our mom used to cook back at home. So it's very special to us. Shout out to Milu, let's check it out. Big shout out to the sponsor of our video today, Boxu. It is the premium Japanese snack subscription box. You've seen me talk about it before. It is like none other. It comes straight from Osaka, Japan. These are snacks you cannot find at your regular Japanese supermarket in America, guys. Every first time Boxu customer is gonna receive a Seasons of Japan box at first, but every month after that, they're gonna get a specific theme. They have this little booklet that's gonna tell you all about it. It's got tons of information, guys. Learn something about your snacks before you eat them. If you're interested in Boxu, at all use fung bros 10 you can get 10 percent off of your subscription box up to 47 dollars. that is a really good deal check it out try it out if you are into japanese snacks at all these are super high quality and exclusive check out boxu all right you guys we are here at milo we have arrived the interior honestly looks like something out of the the IFC Tower in Hong Kong. Uh, they have a really cool team behind this spot because they have chefs from Asia, Asian American chefs, as well as non-Asian chefs bringing in almost like a French 11 Madison angle, so. All right, starting off at Milu, we have the top three dishes here. And I can tell you, man, this looks like something I've never seen before. I mean, the presentation of Cantonese and Chinese flavors is amazing here. The chefs behind this are trained in Hong Kong. They're trained at 11 Madison. That means that they're highly trained. So they actually have pan Chinese flavors here. So that's why that duck doesn't look fully exactly the same you know as what? it does in Chinatown. I, in my head, I was like, why is it the duck that I get mm. from King's Kitchen or Noodle Town where it's like, it's like shining almost. Right. Right, right, right. So this is the crispy mandarin duck. So mandarin being probably like a more broad term of duck. And this is the poached salmon ginger scallion sauce, which this is my favorite this year. Reminds me of something that our the, mom uh, makes. The gurung chong salmon yu. Gurung chong salmon yu. And then uh, here I have a Yunnan beef brisket. Yunnan is a different province of China, but still in the south. Uh, we all we all picked our relative favorite dishes, yes, right? Because Marco, absolutely. you ended up with the duck. Yes, you're yeah. a duck guy. Andrew, you got you you ate this. You request this dish so much. This is the this is the number one thing I get here. I've been here like four times already. Milu. I actually right. never had the Yunnan brisket before oh, here. Yeah. I always got the salmon and the chicken. This is good. Don't talk to me for the next two minutes. I'm not gonna lie. I was really skeptical because. I'm used to eating roast duck from the barbecue uh, Chinese spot. Yeah, from Noodle Town. But damn, this is really good. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't know if you're a brisket person. I am. I know that this is super succulent. And I think it's really crazy the blend they have of like almost like advanced French techniques, but the flavors and all the spices are very traditional. I love Chinatown food. It's kind of greasy, but here at Milu, I would never thought in a million years that I would have white rice with salad. And I would never thought that it would taste this good. Yo, you guys, the salmon is a winner here. I give this an unequivocal 5.5 out of 5. This is my 5 out of 5. Yeah. Get the poached salmon. All right, you guys, we have the next four dishes here at Milu. Everything has been fired. I think that's why they keep the menu small. What are we looking at? We got soy roasted chicken. I've got salt and pepper pulled pork over here. I have Sichuan cauliflower. I got chili crisp chicken, which I thought was popcorn chicken at first. Right. But... And not to mention, we have broccoli and mushroom wontons and fennel pork wontons. So for the vegetarians out there who don't want any meat whatsoever, this is gonna be your dish right here. Round two. For me, anytime I go to a casual dining, fast casual spot, I'm always getting the roasted chicken. So for me, my five out of five dish out of the round two was the soy roasted chicken. 
All right, ending off our mind-blowing meal here at Milu. We got dessert here, and even the dessert, they're trying to take it to the next level, but still at the same time keeping it simple. We have the milk tea soft serve. And of course, this is supposed to replicate flavors of boba, but those are chocolate balls instead of, uh, you know, cassava root. This is the egg tart soft serve like a don tai. The malt cookies right here, and then you have your bolo bao that's filled with their own house-made cream. No, open that up. Marco, what's in it? How you say it? Bolo bao. This is like a bolo bao cream puff. Woo! Ooh, wow. The bolo bao. The cream in here reminds me of a cannoli cream. It does. Mm, it really that's does. a good point. Yeah. Hey, that's a good Italian insight, oh, Marco. Yeah, David, you've always been telling every like Chinese dessert spot that like they need a Don Tot soft serve or Don Tot ice cream. Milu got it, bro. All right, you guys, that's it for uh, Milu, our very first spot on our new Asian concept food crawl through New York City. Just highlighting some of the positivity. We go to a lot of restaurants and um, usually they fall within sort of like within my expectation. I would say Milu hits outside and above my expectation zone. Impressive for a couple of reasons. One, not just the flavor and the quality, but it, it actually, the food comes out really fast, all right? And the prices are not incredibly high. Of lower course, than you think. It's yeah. lower than you think. Of course, it's gonna be higher than your other Chinese spots that are of the same speed, but yo, I mean, I'm just saying, in Flatiron District, you know, this is a nice meal. All right, I'm here with one of the owners and head chef, Connie. You love Milu, but could you explain to us the concept and how it came about, what yeah, you're trying to do? Um, basically, we wanted to open a Chinese restaurant that was just a little bit different from your typical Chinese restaurant. For us, we feel like Chinese restaurants are either like super casual, like takeout spots that you kind of see on like every corner, but on a lot of corners in New York City or like, the place in Chinatown with like the red tablecloths. So we kind of wanted to do our own version that was uh, more inspired by traditional Chinese food, uh, a little bit more, but a little bit more modern and just like our version of it. There's a lot of second generation um, or internationally thinking Asians that are opening up spots. Do you feel like that Milu is like a pretty good mixture of Western and Eastern flavors? And could this be the future? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, like I'm, I'm second generation, you know, I think it's like the perfect blend of like, the childhood food that my parents served me to try and like remind them of their childhood food, but also being heavily American influenced. I think I've been looking for something like Milu my whole life. Something that is both authentically Southern Chinese, but with Western innovative touches that leave you feeling healthy. The portions don't look big, but they're surprisingly filling to the stomach. I wonder if Asian themed high quality dig in type concepts are a huge wave of the future. I sure hope so. I think it's a big area of opportunity for Asian food, but it'll take an expert team to execute. Milu seems like they have that. Alex, we are here at Five Spice right now. And let me tell you this, I have never seen anything like this in New York City before. How would you describe Five Spice? Well, we're just trying to bring modern Vietnamese casual uh, to East Coast. Something new, something exciting. Right, you're saying a concept that maybe people in San Jose, Houston, OC, Garden Grove are more familiar with. Mm -hmm. You're bringing it to Manhattan. Yeah, um, I always, I travel, I've seen other places do other interesting things with food. And for someone who grew up in a restaurant, it's now it's my turn to try to bring a little change to the cuisine. All right, you guys, round one has arrived at Five Spice, which in my opinion is the most West Coast spot in all of Manhattan, at least as far as Asian spots go. We are looking at a gigantic short rib pho. This is a new trend within the pho world. Marco, I know you're used to eating on Baxter. Have you ever seen anything like that? Never in my life that I've seen that before. Um, so on Baxter Street, I normally get to get like the Viet beef food soup. So this is definitely very, very different. Here we got the bumble Huey. This is next up. I know you just learned to pronounce this recently, Marco. Bumble Huey. And bumble you, do you know why they call it bumble Huey? I don't. Because it's from the city, which is in central Vietnam, called Huey. These are fish sauce Brussels sprouts. Marco, you are one of the few uh, non-Asians I know you could totally do fish sauce. You're not oh, against it. 100%. You're with the funk. I'm with the funk. Let's do it. Have you ever had a battered spicy fish with a runny Ooh, egg? Man. With that bun mi right there? That's Ooh. something different. Oh, oh, look at that. The tenderness right there. Oh my goodness. Yo, you guys, this is some West Coast Asian goodness in Nolita of all places. Oh, giant, giant short rib fun. Best short rib I've ever had easily. Oh, that's a good taste, man. That's good. By now, I'm sure somebody, if you live in a major city, somebody in your city has done a gigantic short rib pho. Let me tell you this, not all giant short rib pho's are created equal. All right, next up, of course, we've got the Bumbo Huey. I think in 2021, any good Vietnamese restaurant worth its salt has a good BBH on the menu. 
Round two here at Five Spice, like we said, a little slice of Asian and Nolita. I have two different types of bun mies. I've got a spicy beer battered fish with a runny egg. Of course, I've got the classic Vietnamese pate bun mie. And then what do you got? I got the bun sale tacos with pork and with shrimp and little coconut flakes they got on there. I'm not gonna lie, I never knew going to a Vietnamese cuisine that this was a thing, tacos. Right, well, this is that. absolutely a new fusion dish that I've only seen here at Five Spice. I'm not saying they don't do it in other cities. You guys let me know, but that's amazing. Yeah. I have to come clean, man. This spicy beer battered fish bun mi is one of my favorite. This is my favorite fish bun mi I ever had, period. The flavors are just so much more elevated than any bun mi sandwich I've ever had. And it's a taco, even better. All right, so I had a tag in for round three. Um, Dave is behind the camera now. Marco, in front of us, we have uh, the jazo, jagio, which is the Vietnamese egg roll. And then you have these wings here, which are like, probably have like this nook mom glaze on it, which is the fish sauce. And then you have your classic bun mi. Okay, so of course we got the Vietnamese egg rolls here. Wait, Andrew, you gotta put a little hoisin. So oh man, on. that's not what I do. That's all what right, you do, right, that's what right. you do. Yo, I would have never thought I would find the Jagios outside of Backstreet. All right, here I have the traditional bun mi with the special combo meat. And then you got the fried Brussels sprouts. Yeah, and the Brussels sprouts, it's not really Vietnamese. It's more of a fusion of what us modern, you could say, uh, Westerners eat. Yeah, at a lot of new American restaurants, they have a Brussels sprout dish, yes. but this has Vietnamese sauce on it. Yes. Um, more fish sauce in that one. And I think it's cool because Vietnamese fusion is almost like double fusion because a lot of Vietnamese food already is fused with like French influences from back in the day, as we know. Let me see how they do the original bun mi. This is a traditional one. So these Brussels sprouts are the best Brussels sprouts with the most flavor I've ever had in my life. And I love that little fishiness to it. Yeah. And you it has know, a perfect crunch. You know what I love about those Brussels sprouts, bro? Can you put some in my sandwich here? I got some, I'll get it. Oh, mixology! See, there you know the mixology. That's why I tagged myself we were, we were, in. I was waiting. Mmm. Mm. Well, the Brussels sprouts here, that is a five out of five topping. All right, so closing it up here at Five Spice, I gotta say, as a West Coast guy myself, it's very comforting to be here, and I recommend anybody who's even from the West Coast or even lived there or visited Come check this spot out because it's giving you a different vibe. I know it doesn't look clearly different, but trust me, you gotta come here and you'll know exactly what I mean. I think that the Vietnamese culture might be one of the most chill and fun of any group in the world. It's really open-minded and they focus on having a good time. Maybe it's the French influence, the warm weather, and just the all around attitude of, hey man, what's bothering you? Just relax and have a good time. And I think that's really gonna lead to the proliferation of way more Vietnamese spots. One of the major food trends in 2021 is fast casual, quick service. You guys, you know, because of the pandemic, I think it was a trend even before the pandemic. Basically behind us, China, they got a spot that's trying to do their own more authentic version of Panda Express. Now this spot started in Jersey. They got a location in the city. We're in the financial district right now. And this food is pretty much what if you had a, you know, Shanghainese or Taiwanese or Cantonese grandmother, what they would be cooking at home. So this is much more authentic than for example, Panda Express. Yeah, listen, I love Panda Express, you know, as a white guy, we all love Panda Express. I do love Asian food from Chinatown, the authentic, but I'm very interested to see what we got going on here. Hey, old man, can you quickly tell us what the concept of China is? Yeah, so we started China because we saw a huge void in the industry, in the, in the fast casual sector especially. Uh, so if you go out there to, to any business center, you see uh, the, the Mexican concepts like uh, Dos Toros or Chipotle. You see the sweet greens, the diggings of the world, but where's our Chinese food? Uh, the name? China, can you explain how that came about and why you guys wanted it to name it that? Right, so that's a question we ask ourselves. Uh, both me and Henry, my co-founder, and the other guys, we, we were working in, in corporate America. Every time we ask ourselves, where do we want to go eat? And sometimes we joke around, we say, Chena. Right. Churna. Yes, it means where do you where like do you churna, or like yeah. like a bay fog, like churna, or a glimmer, or a churna. churna. Okay. All right, you guys, we are at China Churna. Um, we are looking at homestyle Chinese guys. They don't attach it to a specific province. It's almost like uh, the way like mashed potatoes and gravy. It's almost like it's just American comfort food. It's tough to pinpoint your finger where it's on. I I, I got a pork belly. You've got uh, the pork meatballs, grandma style. We got the egg, tomatoes, some scallions, and wild rice to be on the healthier sides these days, and some crispy onions as well. Yeah, I and think the wild food. rice is sort of a, a new little elevated touch point, you know? Like, no, forbidden rice, it's supposed to be healthier for you. 
And then of course, I just have the Sichuan pork bowl. This is shredded pork. It has the wood ear mushrooms, a little bit of spicy kick to it, cucumbers on the side to cool it down. So we all have pork dishes here. Let's try these. Guys, Chuna. This is my first Asian meatball, and I give it a five out of five for sure. It almost tastes like when you go to the barbecue uh, Asian spots in Chinatown, uh, the, like the roast pig they have. Uh -huh. Tastes just like it, but better. The forbidden rice has its own flavor. Mm. It's a little bit like fragrant, cinnamony. It tastes almost like a deconstructed guabao, mm. which is the uh, the bao with buns that everybody's familiar with. Immediately, it doesn't taste like how I imagined, but I'm impressed. Guys, if you're coming here for that sweet and sour, like cliche flavor, which is good by the way, and we all enjoy that flavor, you're not gonna get it here. Yeah. This is way more home style. This is stuff that like even our grandmother would kind of eat, David. Like old Chinese people, they eat a lot of like braised stuff and a lot of stuff that actually looks like this color. It's, it's like kind of brown. Yeah, this is it, man. This is like a real deal meal. Last but not least, we got a vegan bowl here at China, sure nah. All right, I'm gonna pour this uh, ginger scallion soy sauce on it a little bit. For me, it was this in the pork belly. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> Honestly, come get the yeah. spicy mapo tofu eggplant and that come get the pork belly. belly. Yeah. That was it for me, man. I'm telling you. I actually think this vegan bowl is my favorite one. Now, all right, guys, I think we've determined that Churna, this brand new, you know, Grandma's Express type spot is good. Do we think that it will work? Now, when you say, do you think it'll work, does that mean like, or do we think that uh, a concept like this can expand to, let's just say five, 10 different locations? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, it's appealing, you walk in, after hard days of work, you come in here, it's calm, nice, you can see all the nice pictures of the food, and it's appealing, but the food tastes even better, you know, and it's healthy, and everybody in today's world, we wanna be healthy, you know, during COVID times, we're looking for a nice, healthy meal. Anytime a restaurant opens up in the financial districts or like the office area, you tend to kind of trust it because they wouldn't open up there uh, with the intention to serve you some like really bad food. So everybody's always gonna try it out. So if, as long as people give it a try, I think they'll like it. Pork belly, five out of five. Sichuan eggplant, mapo tofu, five out of five. Those are you two bangers here at Churna. Churna is trying to create a new genre of Chinese food in America. Grandma's cooking for the corporate lunch crowd. I think it's definitely got a shot because the food is good and as they continue to make tweaks, they'll get into that sweet spot. People are more open nowadays and plus, can you really eat orange chicken for 30, 40, 50 years in a row? Within the bubble tea world, there's always been different niches. Some spots focus more on tea, some spots focused on milk, some spots focus on games, some spots focus on toppings. Well, right behind us is almost the evolution of the organic tea lane that I wanna say really 10 run was in. David, I don't know if I'm looking at some type of Soho Chanel pop-up with, <laughs> it's about perfume, is it tea? I don't know, but this is kind of where a lot of boba shops are headed. Just like a lot of cafes wanna be very aesthetically focused and make it an interesting experience, boba shops do too. Bubble tea, it's like a Tiffany's. Oh, Tiffany's, that's what they were going Tiffany's, for. Tiffany's bubble tea, I got Tiffany's it. Tiffany's bubble tea, okay. <laughs> I got it, okay. Great, great way to put it, okay, right. thank, okay, thank you so much, and we wish you best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, you guys are killing thank us. Thank you so much. The reason there is such a tremendous line behind us is because actually they had uh, a viral video about the packaging for this that went viral. Yeah. And it's a really crazy machine that looks really cool. Yeah. It seals it and turns it into this very unique looking, almost like clear Coca-Cola can. Honesty, Honesty luxury, luxury boba. boba. I think it's kind of expensive, but I think it's for a reason. It's all organic. I can taste the quality in this. This blew me away. Marco, you think you're, I think you're drinking one of those elixir bottles from the game of Zelda? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting some energy now from it. Yeah. Uh, you know, this honestly, I don't know the flavor. I mean, I don't know what it's called, but, um. I'm getting like vanilla vibes for sure and it. it's really, really good. This is kind of like how restaurants and the food industry is going. People want new experiences and they're doing a good job. And you know what I love to see too is that it really goes to show you that the TikTok generation, man, I feel like they really are integrated with each other. Oh yeah, Like, sure. you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's, I, I don't ever remember growing up necessarily seeing a boba line like maybe with that many different types of people yeah. in it. Guys, I think you're gonna see a trend throughout all these spots that we cover. These spots are all going to be able to appeal to a wide and diverse market. Uh, even this spot, even though it's nestled right inside of Chinatown, it is not just for Asians. It is clearly for everybody. And that's what's cool because it's gonna also drive a lot more traffic to the general area as well. Boba shops have always been a bastion and a place of solace for Asian kids in a crazy city and crazy country. But in 2021, it's about time some of them reach out to people who didn't grow up drinking milk tea. And with all the smiles, it's a beautiful thing to see the diversity. All right, you guys, next up on our Asian food trends 2021 is a Georgian fast casual restaurant. Now stick with me here. 
there are some Asian influenced dishes here, even though I know that Georgia is technically part of Eastern Europe. Marco, what do you know about Georgia? I don't really know much about Georgian food, but I do know that it's a mixture of East to West. Hey, there's not even that many Georgian restaurants in New York, so to find a fast casual one, someone who's trying to make it quick for everybody. I was super excited when I saw this place pop up on Yelp. Let's go check it out. All right, you guys, we're here with the owner, Romas. Can you tell us about your concept here? It's Georgian uh, fast casual. All right. So it's, uh, yeah, fast casual. We just opened like a month ago. So most popular uh, dishes uh, in our menu is like baked uh, goods, savory pies. Uh, uh, this location, there's a lot of uh, students around and uh, it's like very kind of comfortable uh, for people to have, uh, you know, convenient to like uh, food to go, let's say um, Georgian food. All right, you guys, we're at Delia. Like we said, this is a fast casual Georgian restaurant. I'm not gonna pretend like I can pronounce the names. I wish I could. I know this is Kajapuri. I know this is Kinkali. Everything else is sort of like... Kashashuli. 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 No, I, the, the names are pretty cool and uh, no, they're fun to say actually. I think uh, immediately, should we start? We, we gotta to. start off with the yeah. bangers, guys. This is this is the Kinkali, the big Georgian soup dumpling. You grab it from the top. You're gonna eat it kind of like a shalom bao where you bite it and then you suck the juice out. So right, let's go for it. For Marco. Bet with the hands. The hands, look at that. This is the largest dumpling I've ever held in my hands. The brawl of dumpling. Right. It actually kind of looks like a, the way a money bag would look like in a video game. King Kali. Very herbaceous, very meaty. Definitely uh, has the same consistency as a dumpling. Yo, real quick guys, I had to just grab some steamed dumplings from across the street yeah. at Lao Ma Spicy, just so we can see how uh, similar or different the Kinkali were. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I love the fact that the Georgian version has onions and pepper. Yeah. And I could see Western people maybe even preferring it to the Chinese ones. Of course, I love the Chinese ones. I love the dumplings from every country, but I will say the Kinkali is special. Moving on, Marco, what does this look like to you? A calzone. A calzone oh, that you get there. it literally looks like that, but can you guys explain? I don't Yo, really know what's in I there. I think it's essentially a bread boat of cheese. Cheese and oh, egg. I mean, cheese and egg in a bread bowl. Can't waste this is the danger zone. We're about, to, really we're about to burn right. our hand with some cheese. Oh, wow. I, I'll try to wow. save your hand. Kajibori. Can't say there are no elements of a grilled cheese, yeah. but it's better. All right, you guys, we are looking at Georgian sausage with a salad. Um, Marco, you got a beef stew. It's a beef stew of mashed potatoes with a Georgian spice and you Georgian cuisine. cuisine. Mm. No. That is fire. That's amazing. Oh my God. No, I, I actually think, I didn't even have that yet. I think this is better. I think the chicken yeah? is good. Oh, get, right. the, get that piece. No, no, the leg, get the leg. It's all good. All right, Yo, grab I'm that piece. the leg, man. Yo, Bang. the flavors in here you are guys, crazy. Yo, did you guys oh my God. A sausage and dipping in the mashed potatoes. Uh, uh. No sausage. Pause. That's the most flavorful chicken I think I've ever had before in my life. In my life. Ah. One bite, one bite, no double dipping. No double dipping, look at that. Honestly, for me, my favorite two things that we had on the hot dish menu, maybe the favorite three, I would go Kinkali, Kajipori, and then actually the chicken. Like Yo. you said, this chicken was a five out of five easily. I love to see other cuisines kind of do an accessible, fast, casual version. Um, because of course you can go to their enclaves, go to their neighborhoods and get the real thing. But to bring the real thing out here and package it in a different way and make it accessible to everybody, I think is one, very tough to do, but two, very noble. And the food is honestly really good. So if they can make the food authentic and fast for people, definitely come to Delia and get the Georgian fast casual. Very authentic and accessible. Like we said, you can just get it on your way to work. All right, you guys, we are here at the dessert round at Cafe Delia. Delia is a Georgian expression that just means happiness. There's no real meaning, this is joy. That looks like an eggplant. Yeah. Sure, right? This it looks like an eggplant emoji. Yeah. Pachella. That was a crazy texture. Yeah. Moving on, guys, to the honey cake. Mm. This looks really interesting. I smell like I definitely had this before. Oh wow! I've never had that before. No, actually. you haven't, bro. I never, had, never it. had it. Yeah. Kind of moist, but also parts of it are dry at the same time, and it's just like this mixture of textures. I, think, I do think it looks good, but I think Georgian food tastes about even four x better than it looks. Absolutely. Flaky, Flaky cake. cake. I didn't expect that texture. I'd say the honey cake and then the roast chicken were the biggest sleepers though. I knew the kajipuri and the kankali were good, 
But in terms of the honey cake and the chicken, five out of five bangers, unexpected. Guys, if you guys listen to our picks from this spot, you will not be disappointed. Georgian food is one of the best unknown cuisines in the world. It's a country with such different influences, from the Mediterranean to Persia to Turkey to Mongolia. Previously, you could only get this food at fancy sit-down restaurants, but now in 2021, you can lower the barrier to entry with a fast, casual spot. Another food trend that we see in 2021, Andrew, are obscure provinces of traditional food finding their way into the city center using technology. So we are at Old Xi'an Delicacy and they're using technology in a way that you just would not think that they would. Hey man, everything is becoming faster. So what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna order right off of the iPad over here. But here you got the iPizzy, okay? And you're just gonna tap for here. David, what do you want? I mean, uh, that, probably noodles Android if we're noodles? talking about Xi'an. Are, are, are these the Daparnji? Possibly. Well, some version of it. Some version of it. We'll say flat noodle, of course. Oh, get the extra spicy. Uh, Marco, extra spicy. Extra spicy. Let's yeah, do it. Right. There's only one way. Marco, you said you actually been here before. I was actually here with my ex, but we were arguing the whole time, so I don't remember if the food was good or not, honestly. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're at Old Chi uh, on Lao Xi'an, and uh, we just ordered some lamb noodles, some liang pi, and all types of rojamu, rojamu, like Chinese burgers, pork, chicken, lamb. <laughs> Beef, David, be real with the people here and how we ordered because you can't do this in China. Kind of feels like China. You guys, we've got some Xi'an ancient food. This food is probably from a thousand years ago, circa the Silk Road. You see a melding of Middle Eastern, Indian, Chinese flavors here. Uh, Marco, you said you actually know, know something about the Silk Road. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a it was a passageway to trade from Iran all the way to to Asia. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, is, that, that is true. Dude, is I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm surprised you knew about that. I knew. You know what's funny? For some reason, that always stuck with me from uh, from social studies. Yeah, yeah. so you got the uh, Liang Pi noodles, which are a little bit more jelly-like. Um, so the thing about the food is that these cuts of chicken are probably non-traditional. It's probably made more for the audience out here, so it's more mainstream because it kind of looks like teriyaki chicken slices. Yo. So this is lamb burger. We've got scallions on there, and this is the pork Yo, burger. I got to teach you how to say this. That's a, a roll job one. Rojamwa. That is crazy. Wow. It tastes exactly like China. Marco, how's the lamb burger? Yo, it's really, really good. I love how they put the peppers in there, so it's a nice little kick they have, but the flavors are really good. This definitely reminds me of a pulled pork sandwich before, definitely. Really, really good. Um, the bread's different, though. I never had like a type of bread like this. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's different. It's very difficult to describe. This it, might be one of the better sauces, too. It's really easy yo, to eat, but this very is spicy, honestly bro. one of the craziest dishes I ate in Manhattan All ever. Right. Tastes like we're in Flushing. Let's try this uh, beef shank stew. Here we go. This roja more. Look how bubbly this bread is right there. If you see it, this thing is amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> Andrew, were these not some of the most authentic tasting Chinese noodles you've had in terms of like that central yeah. Chinese flavor? Yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by the flavors that they have. I think the cuts of meat and kind of the style that they put it all in, it's not necessarily the most authentic that I've ever had. Now it's pretty cool, Marco, that you can come here and uh, you can just order off the iPad, so it's easy for everybody. Of course, yeah, and, and you know, it's that language barrier, so you're gonna see a lot of non-agents come, and they can just order real quick off the off the iPad, and uh, I think it's a really unique, cool way to do things. Ancient thousand-year-old food, brand new technology. Oh, the Xi'an spice got me. Yo, it's spicy, it is. <laughs> Continuing with our 2021 Asian food trends, we've got Tatsu Ramen right behind us. Very, very much like old Xi'an delicacy, it's pure iPad menus. Yo, you do not have to talk to a single person to order a nice bowl of ramen here. It's also open very late. That's why we're here at night. Marco, you love this spot, man. The best ramen in New York City. Wow, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh. You do know pasta more than noodles, so, but I'm gonna take that I with a grain of salt. No, no, all right, let me just say this. I do like the ramen here. It is. All right, so no, this, no, no, no. If Marco feels that way, it's that's, your wait, even, that's your opinion. Right? Even the pork buns are amazing, and the fried rice. Okay. It's, the it's very solid. The food is very solid here. It, it is. Uh, it's owned by a white guy from California. Wow. But he partnered with a Japanese chef to come up with the menu, and I think that that's something that you're going to see a lot moving forward. Because obviously, in the past, it was almost like either you have people from Japan doing it ultra, you know, serious Japanese mm -hmm. style, or you had like some wacky like San Antonio ramen. And remember they. They're doing smoked yeah. brisket uh, stuff in Texas. And I mean, it makes sense because you're gonna have the American person kind of get the systems going, set things up, know how to market it. But then you gotta have the authentic Japanese chef to bring in the authentic, you know, Japanese flavors. And also, to be honest, for PR reasons, it, it just sounds better. So, 
Anyways, guys, Tatsu Ramen. We have eaten here very, very late at night before, right after Fat Buddha. Tatsu, Tatsu Ramen. ramen. All right, you guys, I just realized this is not an iPad. This is something much bigger than an iPad. It's their own, you know, toast, own proprietary thing. But anyway, you've got a bold ramen, cheeky ramen, hippie ramen, old school, naked, soul ramen, or red ramen. What's your favorite, Marco? Yo, I go with the bold ramen. It's amazing. And the best thing about it is that if you're gluten, if you're allergic to gluten, they have non-gluten free. And they have gluten free noodles. So they have options here, guys. Oh my goodness, we're looking at a cheeky ramen. This is their pork tonkatsu. So the really interesting thing about the broth here at um, Tatsu Ramen is they were formulated with a Japanese chef, but with a non-Japanese audience in mind. Old Xi'an Delicacy and Tatsu Ramen are riding the iPad menu tech wave. It definitely streamlines operations and makes their entire restaurant back end run smoothly. Touchscreen menus have been around for like five years, but honestly, I do not think the technology got really good, convenient, and just smooth until this year, 2021. If I had to bet, I would be bullish on this trend of iPad menus. It only makes sense, especially if other people have already adopted in other countries.